you see in this whole acquisition uh, analysis being put together by uh, the whole M&A deal as it were? Like I said, let's look at it from survivor business angle. You know, um, the CBN has decided that look, basic requirements need to be met before you can carry out banking functions. And it's either you find a way as an entity to meet that minimum requirement. Or you seek, you seek partnership with uh, others that are also almost there, such that you can all be collectively there. You see, the, a growing, a growing and expanding cake is better than a shrinking one in in, 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 in small hands. You know, if 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 the if the if coming together will bring business synergy in terms of um, business growth and it can also enhance profitability. Everybody should key in. Like I said, it's like um, there's no escape route now for for those institutions that are not there. So the, the fundamental thing, the basic thing they need to do is to key into something close to what they could get. And you know, the reality now is that you win some, you lose some. You know, you cannot have it 100%. You know, so basically, it's not going to be easy, but we just have to make the best of the situation. You know, instead of losing out everything, why don't we make conscious effort to make sure that this thing works? You know, so um, in terms of uh, is, is what you are bringing on the table that will determine your holding in the, in the, in the final structure. So fundamentally, my, my, my charge and prayer, and my charge to the operator is that they should just give every initiative to ensure that there's continuity. It can make sense out of the whole uh, initiative, you know, because like I said, we are going through a stage, we do need to compound, we, we need to quickly move away from the things that won't make mergers and acquisition work. We need to move away from there and start uh, taking it further to impact on the respective, because there is real work, uh, there is work for, it's not, it's, it's not about, it is when you are in business that and you make profit that you, you can start talking about uh, impacting on the other sectors of the economy. There are a lot, they, they, things are at standstill. Banks are not lending. So if, if, um, if this major thing is, is put behind us and we know which institutions are standing, then the issue now is that how can we now take it a step further to start um, impacting on the other sectors of the economy, you know? So there are still more issues there are more issues behind um, a group of people uh, working such that we cannot make pro uh, the required progress that we need to make in the financial sector. All right. I remember John Abo, the MD and CEO of Fusionic Bank, saying that the deal they had, they now have with Echo Bank, is yeah. one of the best. Do you see this whole this whole budget acquisition thing? benefiting retail investors more or you see it's been more um, advantageous for the institutional investors? You see institutional investors on one hand, the, most of them that are buying into these mergers and acquisition, apart from the, the ultimate um, return on their investment, most of these institutional investors, they have interest beyond um, what an average retail investor is looking into. Um, an average retail investor might be interested in uh, just trading. 
you know, capital gain. I buy a stock at one naira, and I'm looking for an exit route when it is when I achieve some 50 percent or 100 percent capital gain. While an institutional investor, of course, an institutional investor might not be an institutional investor ordinarily too is looking out for capital gain, but it's looking beyond the the moment. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So it's, it's looking at future, it's looking it's looking at uh, an institution that will that will, that will ensure um, continuous and ongoing income streams through dividend payout and things like that. You know. So and of course some of these junior investors they are doing this at the instance of their own um, I mean they have businesses beyond shareholding in these banks, you know. So they, they are looking at the, some of them, unlike the PF, I mean, you can group them into asset managers like the PFAs. Basically, those ones, statutorily, they need to take position in some stocks that meet some um, rating. And of course, definitely is all about return on their investment. There are some other class of uh, investors that they buy into banks because they want, this, they, they, they want to have a stake in a bank that can impact on their own other businesses. You know, there are, there are institutional investors that apart from taking having stake in in, in in strategic financial institutions for return on their investment. Those institutions, they, they, they are clients, they, they, they have businesses that are, are clients of such banks, such that they can, I don't know if you, you understand what I'm trying to say. In, in essence, an institution that is into an international trading, you know, a, a manufacturing concern and things like that. So they need finances. So they are buying into some of these institutions such that it can complement their other business interest. You know. So basically, the long and short is that nobody, no institutional investor will go into, if, 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 if an investor claims that he's got a good deal, be assured that, be assured that it, it, they've done their homework, they know what they are talking about, and they must have actually gotten a good deal from such uh, arrangement, from such a M and A, because the bottom line is that we are talking about a huge sum of uh, investment involved in this transaction. So you, you must be sure that you don't lose out in the final analysis. The difference, like I said, an average uh, retailer can move out, you know, without much uh, 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 notice, you know, you can, can exit and move in. But most of these you know, investors, they cannot get out easily. So they must do their own work and be sure that what they are going into, at least at the point of going to it, it was based on best judgment. Okay, the EGMs have taken place now. The mergers and acquisitions are yes. being voted in support of by shareholders of banks. Yeah. Do you see this whole um, initiative impacting the banking sector shares? Ordinarily, the truth of the matter is that I, I will look at it from a good woman for the market, you know. Um, in the sense that at least they could, people can see that there is this conscious effort to make sure that everybody, everybody is on good standing. So at the end of all these, at the end of this deadline, we now take stock. Let's know which of the institutions are standing. Some of them will have to go off the daily official list, you know, since they've merged. Um, to be candid, I rather say that. Um, is a good omen for the market and um, it should let's put it that way you know it depends on it depends on how post major situation is managed it should impact on the 
on the market performance in the final analysis, you know, and uh, it should boost confidence in the among um, investors. But most importantly, these institutions must be professionally managed. You know, it has to be professionally managed, and I think virtually everybody has learned. Um, they have learned their lessons, and uh, that it's either we do it rightly, or uh, miss it. I mean, you do it rightly and get it right. Because even in, in other clients where they try as much as possible to be professional, there are still issues. Not to not talk of where people overdo things, and uh, you know, there is no there is no shortcut to doing things properly if you want to get the desired result. Thank you.